Can you hold that? Or? Um, I'm good. I can hear you. Okay. So, yeah, I got a loud voice. Uh, Mark, what's your reaction to the burden? My reaction is the dog and pony show's over. We, uh, we sat through this thing for two and a half weeks. Uh, the cover-up for this whole show started the day Keith got killed. Somebody, they locked us all out of our house. Somebody took the screwdriver that Keith had his in, in his hands off of my counter. The cover-up started a long time ago. And the bad part about this is, you know, my son's in a box, but a murderer's getting away with murder today. He killed my kid. You, all, all you news people sat in that courtroom for two and a half weeks. There's no evidence. Every, you know, all, they say all the cops are lying. The, the only story that is true is his. His was the most ridiculous story going. It was all fabricated. You know, this should have been in front of a jury. This is a community where, you know, it's all supposed to be a community. This guy was just so blatantly guilty that it was unbelievable. And now, you know, to me, this system is so corrupt. These cops, the bad cops, not all of them. Some of my best friends are cops. I have nothing against police officers. But the bad ones need to be held accountable. This one just got away with murder. Everybody knows it. And now other cops, they're going to kill another person today for no reason, somewhere in this country. And they're going to get away with it. And they're just going to keep getting away with it, you know. It's got to be stopped somewhere. You know, my, my son died. You can't bring him back. But I don't want to see somebody else's son or daughter die because some cop had a bad day and decided, you know, he didn't have time for this. You know, if he didn't have time, he shouldn't have showed up at my house. If this guy didn't show up at my house, my son would still be alive. There's two other police officers who testified to that. It just, there was so much evidence against this man in, you know, not, not guilty verdict. You know, it was a bought and paid for. It's all a system. They're all, they all work together on this. You know, there's, there's no reason for this verdict. And I'm sure you, all you ladies that were in the audience, if you were part of the jury, it would have been guilty. So, what do I don't you know. think happened? What? Why do you think what happened happened? The verdict? No, the shooting. Because this guy came in my house. It, it was proven by everybody. I'm here to kick ass, take names, but the EMS, the defense say they're lying. The police officer, me, my wife, all heard him walk in the door. I don't have time for this shit. Taze that kid, take him down. Now, that's not police work. He's supposed to go in there like he said he was his job. He's supposed to find out what went on. He didn't. He walked in there, ordered this kid tased. He hit the floor. He shot him. And the defense is, you know, wanting to know what, you know, they wanted to tase him five more times. The kid was already shot. He shot him as soon as he hit the floor. I think it was two and a half seconds. You know, it, it's just he walked in there with an attitude. The only reason this kid got shot was because this guy didn't have time for it. He didn't want to be there that day. You know, if you, you don't want to be there, if you don't want to do your job, and the prosecutors, they did everything and they proved it. But he's still innocent. They proved everything he said. But his story is different, and they believe his story over five, six other people that all told the truth. All the stories were the same. But they believe this guy because he, you know, he's a cop and we can't, we can't, we can't put one of them in jail. You know, it doesn't matter what you are. You killed somebody, you go to jail. He did not do his job. He came in there with an attitude problem. My son died because he had an attitude problem that day. You said on the body, Mike, that um, if you'd have obviously known this was going to happen, you would have went in and just took the screwdriver from Keith yourself. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even want to call. I called because my wife kept bugging me to call. He was having a bad day. Okay, leave him alone. So when he's in the hallway with the screwdriver and um, Lewis Chavez and uh, Thomas are trying to talk to him and coax him to drop the screwdriver, what prevented you then, I'm just curious, from going and taking the screwdriver from him? I didn't think somebody was going to come in and shoot him. Right. We were all talking to him. He was having a bad day. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was right there with him talking. You know, I was on the pile. I'm the one that took the screwdriver out of his hand. You know, it, there was no reason to think that something violent was going to happen. We didn't know, you know, the violent cop was going to walk in here. You know, he had no legal right to order them to be tased, and it was all proven. You guys sat there. He walked in the house for no reason at all. The kid didn't commit a crime, ordered him tased. 
Never saw the kid, nothing. Ordered him to tase him. Do you think? And my um, son heard that and panicked. Ran in the bathroom. He got tased on the way out the bathroom. I mean, you know, you, you've got a mentally ill patient, you've got a, a person that's drunk, anything. It's confrontational. You don't say, yeah, okay, I'll fight you. The other police officers talked to him for 15 minutes. You know, it, this was, it wasn't a standoff. He said it took him 20 seconds to walk, you know, 12 feet at a hurried pace. It took two to three seconds. You know, it, it's just all the evidence, he was 100% guilty and they still let him off. I, it's I just not right. When we first met, you talked a lot about training police officers to deal with those who have mental illness. Where do we go from here for your family with Keith's Law? Uh, my wife's pursuing it. Uh, I know what they train police officers, shoot to kill. You know, the, the training's there, none of, it's not mandatory. I'm a general contractor, I had to get training. You guys have to have training. Why don't you train a police officer? But he, even then, uh, John Thomas, uh, he wasn't trained, but he had enough common sense to talk to the young man. You know, he, he didn't go in there with violence. He told the court he had all day, let's talk. He told the court he gets paid overtime. Let's just talk to the young man. Samantha Lewis had the training. She walked in there just like she was his mother and talked. Bassey walked in the door. He told everybody he was going to kick ass, take names outside, walked in the door. I don't have time for this shit. Tase the kid, take him now, walk over to the officers two, two seconds later, and then order him to tase him. So, you know, it, it's just, it's not right what happened, but we call it legalized murder in this country, I guess. And I watch it all over the country, and they keep getting away with it, and they're going to keep getting away with it. Somebody else today will get shot by a cop. They shouldn't be shot, but it'll be okay. Do you think it was just, uh, do you think that Bassey was incompetent? Like he just didn't know what to do or the right way to do it? Or do you think he was just a rotten dude? Just a rotten person. He had an attitude problem. You don't walk up as a police officer and tell EMS you're here to kick ass, take names. And that's just not your job. And then walk in, it's just bad day. Who knows, you know? You know, he's taking drugs that he shouldn't be taking. You know, it's just, if you're a police officer, you have a duty to do your job and do it right. He did not do any of those things. And it was, you know, flat out, the prosecution proved it all, that what his story that he said happened could, impos it was impossible for it to happen. Absolutely impossible, but he's still innocent. In, in order for the judge to come back with a not guilty verdict, he had to believe that Bassey thought somebody or his life was in danger. Or he got bought and paid for. Just, uh, to me, this was just a dog and pony show, and this was all, the verdict was already in. You know, I think we just wasted all our time. You guys sat there for three weeks, and it was all just, to me, a joke. This was all arranged. Why wasn't it a jury trial? Why, why was it a bench trial? Why is the judge from some other county? You know, they're, they're not gonna, say guilty if they say guilty their career is over you know to me it's a it's a corrupt system and it's going to stay corrupt until somebody does something about it but people are dying my son died because of the system you know he didn't die because of the system but the system didn't punish his murder they let him go and now where's he going to go now he's going to go shoot somebody else who knows is he ever going to be a cop again so what's he going to do move to another state and okay give me a gun and a badge so i can kill somebody else you know if if they make them accountable for their actions and maybe the rest of the police officers, it would think twice. And I mean, most of them do their job. I mean, there's bad ones, there's good ones, but there's, you know, there's a few bad ones that give every, all the other police officers, you know, a bad name, but there's nothing wrong with them. There's very, probably 1% of police officers in this country that are bad, but, it, and it happens in every line of work, but when they're bad, they need to be punished, but they won't punish them. And this one just got away with murder. There's no other way to put it. Legalized murder, to me, it was just a dog and pony show. The cover-up started the day my son got killed. I took the screwdriver out of his hand. I put it on the counter. Even in the recordings, the, the voice mic you can hear, I had the screwdriver. Where'd the and pick come from then? Vassie's garage. 
So you're that saying pick, you... I, or the, the screwdriver, I took it out of my son's hand. I watched his eyes roll back in his head, and his hand went open. I picked it up. You can hear it on the body mic. I got the screwdriver. And that, you know, that's the way it was. But then he shows up three and a half hours later at the police station with an ice pick. And then the screwdriver that I put on the counter, that other people saw me put on the counter, because they locked everybody out, is gone. That's where the cover-up started in this whole thing. Somebody was helping him from day one. And I mean, that, that would be a pretty elaborate cover-up, though. I mean, that, somebody would have had to have the foresight to see that he was going to then replace the weapon with a pick. Yeah. I took it out of his hand. John, John Thomas did not hand it to him because you can hear it on the body mic. You know, somebody get the screwdriver. You can hear me. It's clear as day. I've got the screwdriver. And I chased him out of the house. I still had a screwdriver in my hand. He ran out the front door with me screaming at him. If uh, Officer Lewis didn't tackle my wife, she would have tackled him. He ran out the front door like a coward. Then I put the screwdriver on the counter. My wife saw me do it. Screwdriver comes up missing. He shows up three and a half hours later with a pick. You know. And you're saying that pick was never in no, your house? No, that pick was never in my house. Never. You know, we all saw it. Keith showed it to me an hour and a half before this happened. I was two feet from him. You think I'm gonna, if he had a pick, that I would let him keep it? He had a little screwdriver. If you know, somebody was coming at you with a pick, would you consider that a deadly weapon? Of course. You know, a pick, but, you know, I wouldn't shoot him. You know, I mean, but he didn't have a pick. So, you know, this was all manufactured. You know, it was not... You know, it never happened. He had a screwdriver. The pick, basically got it out of his garage, or one of his buddies brought it to him, but it never come out of my house. It was a screwdriver, and he just got away with it all. Somebody took the screwdriver out of my house, though. That I'll guarantee you. So, he got away with it. So another cop gets away with it, and, you know, there's two other cops that told the truth, but the defense said they were liars that, you know, they're not credible. So nobody was credible except him.